I'm Jake. I'm Tom. We are Velocities in Music. On this podcast, Tom and I discuss a band of topics pertaining to modern music, including artist deep dives and random music topics. Before we get started, you can help support Velocities in Music. Subscribe to Velocities in Music on your favorite podcasting device to automatically get our latest episodes sent to your device for your listening pleasure. Want to help Velocities in Music grow? You can. Velocities in Music was founded on the idea of creating an enriching discussion about modern music. Please share Velocities in Music with the music enthusiasts in your life. Together, we can move music discussion forward. TD the Needy. Yeah, that's it what, has been, that's what they it's call been me. A, yeah. Well, well that's what you call me. <laughs> uh, me. Me, I'm not alone, though. Like, no, there's no. others that call you that. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, there, there, it has been like a month or two since you and I have spoken about music. Yeah. Well, that, that's not really true. We, we uh, got together when I was in Ames uh, for work, and we, we got together and listened to your new album. Mm-hmm. Mm, that was a lot album. of fun. Yeah, this is your fifth album that's, that you're getting ready for, right? Yep. Formerly titled, you want to say? P- People. It was formerly titled formerly People. yeah and what's and it? what what's it titled now we're lo- we're looking at calling it real life we who's this we <laughs> that's you that's me yeah. that's me that's me but i'm not part of the band this yeah, is the no. tom hummer show <laughs> but otherwise it's just it's just me in my studio like you know getting smelly and and only thinking of my it's, own ideas it's not good i mean it's always been tom hummer and friends right yeah, sh- yeah, for I mean, it, that's it, true. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm really excited for that. You gave me the first uh, edition of that uh, almost a year ago. Yeah. In fact, more than a year ago. And so I've been I've been rocking that thing like like it's been an album that's been released all this time because it was pretty good to go then. Yeah. Um, but, so you're spending you're spending your time perfecting it like you always do. I, I am. But before then, much much before then, I'll be releasing the songs that I very much owe people for the Kickstarter campaign that I did like a year and a half ago. Right. Um, I, I get one of those songs. I'm really excited do. for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have that to you like this week. Nice. Like it's it's pretty much ready to go. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to nice. have that one done. I, I'm looking forward to that. I don't want to spend too much time talking about your music. That's not sure. what this podcast is about. But I am just in general very excited about new Tom Hummer music. Tom, you have a great great um, background of, of many different acts that you've put together over the years of all the different music that you make. You're th- For those of you listening out there, Tom is the real deal. I'm just a guy who talks and sounds excited about things. Occasionally, I know something, but it's usually stuff I just read on Wikipedia. Tom actually knows things, and he practices what he, what he preaches. This guy plays multiple instruments, he records his own music, and he has like 20 different side projects that he's always doing. And I'm just one little facet. Velocity is a music... <laughs> <laughs> little facet of Tom's greater musical life, just so you know. Well, thanks. Um, Tom, yeah. it's been a couple months. What new music have you been into lately? We're not Dude. doing our uh, uh, monthly wrap-ups anymore. I'm, I'm no. curious, like, what you've been into. Dude, I've I've been trying to catch up, and it's it's been tough because we've also, you know, we did the David Bowie deep dive, which took a lot of listens to David Bowie's, you know, like, what, 26 albums or something like that. Um, so that was taking a lot of my time. And then I've also just, you know, once it gets to spring and summer, there's certain seasonal music that I really want to dig into. Jake, we talked about this on a podcast quite a while ago, what, what music is good for the season. So I've been doing some summer jams recently, listening to some reggae and deaf tones and Queens of the stone age and just all kinds of great stuff there. Um, so it's, you know, I've been jumping around a lot, but I'll tell you, it, June just ended and I just finished listening to all the stuff that I had on my list for May new releases. So I've, I've got s- still some catching up to do because June was a five Friday month um, and there were some really noteworthy releases. We had a new Gorillaz album. We had new uh, Kanye West album. We had new Nine Inch Nails album. Um, catching up on those things, I've been listening to those those three albums a bit. Uh, the new Nine Inch Nails one is is Nine Inch Nails one is kind of weird. Um, you know, shorter album, like six tracks, feels like a continuation of the EPs that they've been putting out. Um, but and overall, just a much noisier, more abrasive sound. So that's kind of cool to hear. You know, you got the new Gorillaz album, which is much brighter than their last one, featuring some some more Damon Albarn highlights and uh, a little bit more consistency in the sound. I think. 
Uh, so, you know, not that I'm trying to launch into to like one minute reviews of all the things I've been listening to, but it's been a lot about ba- trying to balance that new stuff as well as just being self-indulgent and listening to what I want to listen to. Because I feel like that's kind of what music listening is all about, right? I mean, you don't want to get so uh, burn out on just trying to hammer through new stuff that you get sick of it because really... I mean, you can't really internalize and, and value the new music that's coming out if you're forcing yourself to listen to it and you know you don't even want to, you know? Yeah, that's a really good point. And it brings us to why we gather here tonight, Tom. I mean, t- yeah. tonight we want to do a, a topic podcast. We we went on an escapade there for about like three months. We did nothing but listen to David Bowie. It might have actually been longer than that, but we recorded mm-hmm. all a deep dive of all of David Bowie's discography over three parts, nine albums, eight albums, nine albums. Um, and, and that was quite the run. Um, you know, I got I got to say ever since then, I've still been uh, wanting to listen to David Bowie. But I if I ever need to, I just just think about David Bowie and I can hear every song. <laughs> we listen to. Yep. But I've been trying to catch up on new music too. A couple albums that I've been super into is Young Fathers, Coco Sugar. I've been really digging mm-hmm. that one. Um, I've really liked the new John Hopkins um, Singularity. That that album um, is probably top five for me uh, for 2018 yeah. so far. I really really love that album. Um, Lucy Dacus, her new album Historian. Um, I really dug that one. Been checking out the new Y Oak and also, uh, Tom, I don't expect you to really appreciate this at all, but I, I think the new father John Misty album, uh, God's favorite customer is, is excellent. And I've really yeah. been digging that. I um, listen, so I, I listened to that one and I, I liked it more than pure comedy, which will probably upset a lot of people, but <laughs> you know how I felt about that one. Right. Right. Uh, well, you know, that was a polarizing album. We covered yeah. that one in detail last year. Mm hmm. Yeah, so I was, I was, I liked this new one. It felt a little more toned down and a little less focused just on the lyrics and and the the message, and a little more focused on the on the musicality. So I I appreciated that. Um, I liked I liked the other ones that you mentioned as well. John Hopkins uh, is great. Um, I also want to call out uh, the new Beach House album. I really liked. You know, oh, really? Pete, yeah, I I really liked Teen Dream, and I liked the last few albums they put out since then quite a bit. Um, you know, thank your lucky stars, depression, cherry and bloom, but I, it it just, it all felt like a continuation of teen dream that just didn't quite live up to teen dream. This new one, their new album seven, it really goes like full shoegaze, man. Like dream, Mm. like shoegaze, dream pop, like in full glamor and sparkle, uh, not the kind of minimalist stuff. Like it's, it's lush and I really like it. It actually feels like a. Uh, a more risky and bold move from them, which I really appreciate. Yeah. Um, I also, one that's stuck with me this year is, is the new album from Caroline Rose. Um, mm. it just, a uh, indie singer songwriter artist. And, and she just has songs that really stick with me. It's an album with a lot of, um, a lot of novelty and a lot of just good, varied songwriting that really stuck with me. So nothing like flashy or overly special about it stylistically. I just think it's done really well. So check that one out if you haven't. Oh, and the Decemberist came out with a new record. That's mm, how'd you feel about that one? That's probably all we need to say about it. Yeah, it was released. So in the in the past uh, couple months, we did our first Velocities of Music Music League. Yeah. Um. We we took twelve people. Um, we, we wanted to do a smaller league for our first season of Music League or the VIM Music League. And man, it was a lot of fun. I, I found a lot of music that I hadn't heard before. Um, we covered a lot of interesting themes. Um, and we're just about to kick off season two of the Velocities of Music Music League. Um, this time around, we have solicited via our Facebook uh, Facebook page 20 different people, um, some repeats from season one, um, but a lot, a lot of new folks. Um, and we're about ready to start an eight week league where we will battle it out with our favorite music according to a few themes. Now, themes for Velo- for, for Music League. For those of you who have not listened to the podcast we did, oh, I'd say a year and a half ago now, Tom, mm-hmm. on how to do a Music League, uh, we, we in detail covered... Um, how to set up and run your own Music League. But a couple things have changed since then. First, uh, just to give you a high level, what is Music League? Music League, you get a group of people together, you form a league, and then every week uh, there is a theme and everyone submits a song via Spotify link um, 
to build a collaborative playlist in accordance to that week's theme. The playlist goes out, everyone listens to the playlist, you don't know who submitted which song, and then you vote on your favorite songs. And over the course of the league, the votes are cumulative. Whoever has the most votes at the end of the league wins the league. Kind of fun. Um, since we recorded our podcast, um, some friends of Tom and mine made a music league app. And it is a website. You can go to www.musicleague.app and start your own music league today. Now, we have, uh, for season two, 20 people already in the league. They are cemented in the league, and we are not accepting any more. However, at any point in time, feel free to send us an email at velocitiesinmusic at gmail.com. You can uh, get your name on the list for season three and actually do a music league with Tom or myself. Uh, that said, there is no limit. You can start a music league with your friends today. Just go out musicleague.app and hit create league. Uh, it's a lot of fun. You got to have a Spotify account and an email address as soon as you have those two things, which hopefully you do, considering that it's 2018, you are good to go. I'm really excited, Tom, for yeah. season two. And I believe, I believe since I kind of took the reins on setting this one up, I believe you haven't actually seen the themes, the eight themes we're going to do for no, season I haven't. two. Okay, I haven't. well, read them I'm off going, to me. Yeah, I'm going to surprise the shit out of you right yeah, here yeah, on this yeah. podcast. We're doing it I'm live. Like, now, I want your natural reaction here. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to go week by week. It's eight weeks, so right in order. First, songs you secretly love, but if you were blasting it in your car stereo and another car rolled up, you'd roll up your windows fast. <laughs> I dig it. All right. Week two, songs that you want played at your funeral. Tom, Ooh. you may know the song I want played at my funeral, and I will be submitting that even though I know I will lose. <laughs> okay. Week three, songs from an EP. Now, this I like one's that. Tough. Yeah, yeah, I like this one a lot too. Uh, this one's tough because songs from an EP. Let's let's think about that. Because you know, Radiohead. Got to bring up Radiohead. This wouldn't be Velocities of Music if we didn't bring up Radiohead once a podcast episode. Mm -hmm. Radiohead has released a number of EPs with some of their major singles and and favorite Radiohead songs on their EPs. But but I would say that for this week, the theme of songs from an EP are generally favoring songs that are exclusively, exclusively. found by an artist yeah. on an EP or at the very least first released on the EP with a preference towards exclusively released. I agree with that. I mean, I don't think it's against the league to submit continuing your example, my iron lung from the, my iron lung EP, but I, I would definitely prioritize my votes to other EP yes. exclusive tracks before totally. that. Yeah. Yep. So I'm really excited. For, I've never done that one before. I'm really excited for that. Yeah, it's Actually, a great. I, that's a great theme. Yep. Yeah, most of these themes I've never done before. So this is this is pretty exciting. All right, week four songs by an artist who in Spotify with the five popular tracks listed at the at the top of when you search for the artist in Spotify, none of those tracks can exceed fifty thousand plays. Mm, I if, like that. If all five of their popular tracks are sub 50,000 plays, any track by that artist is eligible. Okay. So that'll be a really fun one. I'm really excited about that one. Yeah. Week six, songs that can be considered a deep cut, a deep cut. So mm -hmm. going into the back catalog, trying to find I'm, a really... I'm going to not submit the same song that I do that every time this time. Yeah, what? Yeah, because I'll pick it out right away. You'll know. You called me out on it last time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, week, uh, what, what am I on? Six? I so. Yeah, six or seven. The last one, I might have said six. I meant five. Okay. Week six, song from the last concert you attended. Ooh. I added some stipulation to this, Tom. I added some stipulation. So, Tom, you just saw a concert a couple nights ago. Yeah, I saw um, Spoon. Oh, well, great. you shouldn't have said that, because now all of our listeners okay. who are in this next league are going to know that when they see a Spoon song, that dude, it was yours. Dude, y how... You better believe I'm going to several concerts in the next six <laughs> weeks before we get to that theme. I'm not, Touché. I'm not Touché. Good, yeah. I feel like it's safe. So <laughs> in, in that case, you willingly and excitedly bought tickets to Spoon, so it counts as the last concert. Right I now, yes. Yeah, I did make a note that it wouldn't count as your concert if, like, some shitty friend that you're just nice to to their face, <laughs> even though they have shitty taste in music, if they just drug you to some, like, shitty concert, like, mm -hmm. oh... I, I don't know, like the Whoever. Oh Hellos or something Whoever. like that. Like Whoever. some shitty concert that you don't want to go to, but you have to. You don't have to submit that. Was that a subtle jab at your brother? 
<laughs> yes. Yes, indeed it was. <laughs> You're very, very spot on. Um, All right. No, I, uh, yeah, unless like someone drags me to the Iowa State Fair. And, right. and I think, <laughs> like, I don't know who's playing, but I don't care to. It's uh, not going to be good. I saw the Goo Goo Dolls at the Iowa State Fair in 2003, Tom. And that's probably the best act that's played there in the last 15 years. Let's face I'm it. I'm pretty sure Nickelback played there. Come on. You're only supporting my claim. <laughs> All right. Week seven. This is going to be your favorite. I did this one just for you, Tom. Okay. Song Songs with a non-standard time signature. Ooh. I no like four, it. Four, no 4-4, four, four, two, two, three, four, or 6-8. Okay. Outlaw. I dig it. Yeah. Everything else is fair game. All right. Uh, I, also, I also stated that if you submit Gorillas 5-4, that's a cop-out. <laughs> All right, the final week is week eight with songs with an amazing guitar performance. Mm, I like it. See, like it's it's different. It's I tried to go for something a little bit different with there, this musically. Yeah, you know? the, yeah. These these topics are are much denser. I feel like. Yeah. Well, and what better? What I mean, you really need dense topics uh, for themes uh, in a music league full of music enthusiasts like yeah. the velocities and music following that we have. So yeah. I, I'm really pumped for this. We got 20 people, uh, eight themes that I'm really excited about. Tom, and, and it's you know, always fun doing music leagues with you. So yeah, you too, man. I, I was, uh, in fact, like it's frustrating when I do music leagues that you're not in because I've yeah. done, I've done a, a couple and it's like, uh, it's just, yeah, you don't have you to talk to about it, but I, I, I do a music league with my family. It's just six of us in it, my wife and then uh, my brothers and, and my mom and dad. And I've thought about adding you to that just because I need <laughs> something else in there, right? I mean, you're basically my brother. Let's I let's mean, face it. Like, I've known you since you were 12. We've been best friends for, for many years. We've yeah. done this podcast for eight years. I mean, eight and a half years. I know your family I mean, well. Yeah, you, you you we go to concerts together. You, you, know, you know what I could do, too? You know, to keep in line with what you're doing, I could just change my music league username to a slight variation of your name, and then your family wouldn't even notice. Yeah, go for it. Jerk Jerkson. <laughs> <laughs> Where can I put an H in your name? Can I spell your first name J H A K E? That's my thing. That's my thing, Tom. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, enough. we actually we you know we wanted to catch you guys up on, on what's been going on with with um velocities and music with tom and i lately tom uh living in and podcasting from the great great state of iowa in the, mm -hmm. the podunk town of boone um i'm i'm uh, hailing from uh, phoenix arizona these days actually the suburb of gilbert um is where i talk from so we got 1500 miles between us right now and a two-hour time difference but we're still bringing you music discussion hell yeah and that is velocities and music today we have a topic. That topic is, well, I don't know how to word it, Tom, but we kind of hit on it before. How would you yeah. describe it? Uh, how, how do we prioritize our music listening time between new and old music? Man, isn't that the, the challenge of 2018 it is. so far? It definitely David Bowie, is. David Bowie made, really made me want to talk about this on, on the podcast, just from a standpoint that basically I felt like for about three to four months there, uh, I had 26 David Bowie albums plus all of his side stuff that I had to listen to. Um, had to because I wanted to. I want to be very clear yeah, about yeah. that. It it was a monumental task that that I've wanted to do honestly since 2011 when we did a throwback review of David Bowie's 1997 album Earthling. I wanted to go through and and, and really get a sense of every David Bowie album. Uh, but that's such a huge task that I it what I just was waiting for the right time when we yeah. finally prioritized that. You know, it it prevented me from really enjoying a lot of the new music. Um, that was coming out in 2018. So it, it's kind of challenging, and especially when you do a podcast um, where you want to keep up on new music, it's kind of challenging to do a, 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 a dive into older music, a particular artist or genre that's so prolific, right? Yeah, it definitely is. Um, what I, for me, I find it's, you know, it's about trying to find that balance. And it's easy to get really caught up with old music, really caught up with new music, and I tend to kind of like overcompensate in one direction or the other, right? Like I'll go for a while through, uh, you know, like online best of lists, uh, you know, like, like I went through Pitchfork's best of the 70s, 80s and 90s lists. I've listened to Rolling Stone's top 500 albums of all time, right? And like I do those slowly over time 
and I'll mix those in and then like I'll I'll try to I'll be like oh crap I'm neglecting new music and I'll go listen to a bunch of new releases and then I'll kind of cleanse my palate with some old favorites um but it's it's all that, about that finding that actually reminds me. me yeah that actually that actually reminds me I want to do a spin-off podcast mm-hmm. where you and I tackle the Rolling Stone top 500 list and we do every let's say every 2 weeks we do the 10 out al- a 10 album set i'd love to do that let's do it and, and, and like it's just a couple like let's say two album listens per album for 10 albums over two weeks and then mm-hmm. every two weeks like we but it would be so hard it's such a grueling schedule like it would take us years to finish it but when we did we would have that achievement under our belts i think i think that'd be a cool undertaking though because the yeah. nice thing is 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 it never gets stale you know, yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't get stale. Um, but like just just the sheer task. I mean, it's like it's like me and my like dad bod deciding, hey, I'm going to go <laughs> climb Mount Everest. Just give me a couple of years. I'll be there. Like, that's how I feel that that would be. Um, you know, so I, I guess like those of you listening, if that is of interest to you, throw some support our way, because uh, it'll take your motivation to actually it, commit to that. Like, I, I'll just be. <laughs> and, the, and by by taking your motivation, what Jake really means is it'll take you guys holding us accountable. Yeah, for, well, that's, exa- <laughs> that's exactly what I mean. It. Yep. No, I think it'd be fun. And actually, I mean, when you do the math, if we're doing 10 albums every two weeks, it'd take us two years to get through. Um, but I think that's a worthy, I think it's a worthy journey, you know, it, it's a, yeah. it's a cool venture and you learn a lot. <laughs> Plus, honestly, dude, there's more stuff in there that we already know really well yeah. than you would think. Like I bet yeah. of, of on average of every 10 album set that we'd try to do, um, it, we'd probably are already familiar, like pretty yeah. familiar with like three to six of them on, you yeah, know, I, somewhere I, in I'd there. Be- I'd be willing to bet that the toughest part would be like albums 500 through 300. And then after that, it would get significantly easier. Yeah. It's like, Oh, here's another Beatles album. Oh, here's another Led Zeppelin or Pink Floyd album, you know, right, right. a lot of stuff like that in there. Um, yes. but, but you know what? I want to circle this conversation back to what we were just talking about and, and the topic for the night, because when we're talking about new music versus old music, there's also the dynamic of when we say, new do we mean just released or do we mean new to us because there's stuff that was released 10 20 30 40 50 60 years ago that's that we've never heard but so it's new to us but it's not new to the world you know but still the way that we internalize that i think is is different um and you know you have a lot of people out there who don't bother to listen to old music that they don't know to me, it's like music you don't know is music you don't know. There's, yeah, there's, there's, yeah. Uh, there's merit in exposing yourself to anything that you're not previously familiar with. Um, well, well, while that is true, you know, and, and I would say I would classify for, for, for those of us who are, are classified, self-classified as music enthusiasts, the people willing to listen to you and I talk about music in detail on a podcast for more than a half an hour a session, yeah. like, th- like the type of people that we're that we're having a conversation with, Tom, are are people who are keeping up with new music in general. Probably yeah. within the last, like if you consider like n- new current music to be like the last two ish years yeah. of of stuff, then you know, like I, I already feel like I was looking at um, acclaimmusic.net. They're you yeah. know they put out lists. I love that site. The, they finally posted 2016. So I was looking at the best albums uh, and songs that they had from 2016. The thing about 2016 is like, that's officially like a couple years ago. Now, if you think about it, Radiohead's a moon shaped pool came out in 2016. Mm-hmm. That's a long time ago now. And, yeah. and, 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 and it feels like some time has passed since then. And so you can think about them. You can think about that music with historical context in mind. A great example though, uh, father John Misty, God's favorite customer just came out last month. And the thing about that, the thing about that record is it felt like I hadn't fully digested pure comedy yet. Pure yeah. comedy came out just a year before in like April of 2017. So like, I, I feel like I have two new father, John Misty. Albums. Maybe that's just me, but I still feel like that, you know, you know, kudos to him for releasing two albums back to back and back to back years. So that are, I, in my opinion, very good albums. 
So, yeah. you know, I, I really appreciate that. But at the same time, I don't have historical context for his previous album yet. Yeah, that's a great point. The speed at which information and media and entertainment moves along anymore, the the shelf life is so much shorter, it feels like. it. Ju- not, And I'm not saying that, that that in the sense that, like, art becomes devalued. That's not what I mean. What I mean is that it doesn't take as long before you start feeling like you're slipping behind. You know what I mean? Like, honestly, just just being a month to two months behind listening to new releases the last few months, like, I've felt that. Like, I've I've been able to tell, like, crap, I'm seeing people talking about stuff that I, that I know I should know about, but I don't. Like, oh, crap, this person already released their new album? I can't, I can't believe I didn't catch that. Um, I mean, it's like, like, how out of touch with the world do you feel if you, if you fall a couple weeks behind the latest Game of Thrones or Westworld episode, right? It's, it's that. Well, you have to stay off Reddit. (laughs) Yeah. You, you basically, you can't talk to people, right? Because everything is so open. Um, and and I feel that way about music as well. And and it hasn't always been that way. And, And I'm not saying this as a critique. I'm just stating as, as a, as a neutral fact. Like that's, or, or observation rather, I, I won't go as far as to say fact, but that's my observation, um, is just that you, you feel like you're falling behind much more quickly and, and you're right. You know, there is, um, there's something to be said just about keeping up with the culture, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah. that, that requires a lot more effort than it used to because you're made so aware constantly of what you do or don't know or are in the know of or, or out of the know of. So uh, like from that perspective, yeah, it it sometimes feels like a full-time job just trying to keep up with new music. But at the same time, I still want to push myself to listen to stuff from past decades that I know I'm not familiar with, but, but has been on my radar for a long time. Cause I, I think that's a worthy pursuit. Oh, absolutely. And and the thing is, Tom, you know, over the last eight years that we've been doing velocities of music in either video or or podcast form, uh, you know, we've been we've been intentionally trying to keep up with new music. Yep. And the thing is, is it's just an onslaught every Friday. So many albums <laughs> yeah. are dropped. It is almost impossible. I, in fact, I don't think it is possible to keep up with everything. I mean, mm-hmm. that this you, you cannot have a life and keep up with every new album that drops every single week. It's just not possible. Um, that, that said, you know, you and I, we, we probably listen in a thorough listen to at least 200 new albums every single year. And Mm -hmm. and over the past eight years, as we've done this, I have found that especially early on, I started realizing that, you know, I just don't have the context, the historical context of of all of the of all of the influences that these artists releasing new albums are are pulling from that. I can't adequately appreciate the the art that they are presenting. I can't fully understand. I can't even fully comprehend what what. They are trying to do when they craft these albums. And if I espouse to be the purest album listener that I that I do espouse to be and I, I do and, and will stand by that, but I, that I believe that the album is the truest form of of art in music that, you know, it. If if I espouse that, I have to be able to go back and have a strong historical context as to how they arrived at the conclusion that they did for putting forth the artist putting forth what they thought was a good album and then for me to critique it. Right. So in order for me to critique it, I have to have that historical context that requires me to do research, to be familiar with a lot of influence influences, for example. Um, one artist, well, David Bowie is a great example of, of an artist that I feel like I needed to know every single album, every single phase, but there's many, there's even genres that I feel weak on right now. Yeah. One is like post-punk in the eighties. I just feel weak on that. And I need to learn more about that. Um, I, I've been really digging, um, Fugazi lately, but I've never oh, yeah. actually sat and listened to, um, Fugazi's discography, album to album to album. I think I've listened and, to a full Fugazi album one time in my life. And, and that's, a, that's a fucking crime, right? And, and that's also a great example of like, people would argue, can you really appreciate Fugazi if you haven't listened to Minor Threat and Rites of Spring and Precisely. the bands that those members came from? You know, right. you keep working backwards and, and eventually, you know, you hit that kind of um, root of where a lot of music comes from. And, and I totally agree with you. I mean, if oh, it, it helps okay, to Tom, appreciate so, those things. So, so major Tom, can you yeah. help me with this conundrum I'm in? Because 
I'm I'm a busy guy, right? Like mm-hmm. I I have um, a job that I love that requires a lot of my time. I yep. have a wife and two kids, and um, you know, and, and and obviously that requires a lot of my time if I want to be a good husband, good father, which I espouse to be that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, in order to keep up with all my obligations, uh, I only have so much time that I can devote to to listening to music. Mm-hmm. How do I balance trying to keep up with all the new music that's coming out versus investing in my historical context of going back in time and, and, and going through artist back catalogs or genre catalogs where I find like the key albums of those certain genres? Mm-hmm. How do I balance those those two competing priorities with here's, limited time? Here's what you do. Okay. You, you rely on your old pal Tom <laughs> to let you know the new albums that are coming out that you should check out. Cause I'll tell you yeah. what I, 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 I've listened to a lot of new stuff that's coming out. Some of which I get really excited about and some of which I'm just kind of like, that was all right. But I, I don't feel like I really got a lot from listening to that. Well, the vast uh, majority is that was all right, but I didn't really get anything out of it. Right. Exactly. Right. So I I feel like, new, you know, it's good to keep up with new and noteworthy stuff that's coming out. Um, and, and sometimes it's fun to do some digging and try to find that diamond in the rough. But really, like, whenever, like, if you, you know, from what you were just telling me, like, just thinking off the top of my head here, I mean, it sounds like you are really yearning to dig into some, like, historical stuff that you know you've just been a little lacking on right like so like maybe the, fo- the rolling stone some of that yeah like the rolling stone top 500 idea that yeah. intrigues me that intrigues me because i feel like i would get a large swath of that historical context out mm-hmm. of the way and there's um, there's structure to it so yes, it helps there's, there's like guide you along yeah right but at the same time the idea of committing myself to that so say we were to embark on a side podcast where we where we um, every on a biweekly basis, cover 10 albums on that mm-hmm. list. I would in order to do that, I would have to set down ever doing new albums again. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be able to do both. I just don't have the time. There's no way I can get in 20 album listens in a two week timer. I don't even know if I can commit to that, to be frank. <laughs> like and I'm not Frank. I'm Jake. I don't even know <laughs> if I can do that. That is a lot of time. And mm-hmm. I mean, I have I have I spend about an hour in the car, maybe a little more commuting every day. Um, I get time at home that I could devote to it, it, you know, after my kids go to bed and stuff like that. And I'm not saying like not obviously not every one of you listening is going to have the same time constraints that I have. But, Tom, you're a busy guy, too. you got a mm-hmm. job. you got many other uh, side activities that you do. You have a wife. You have a house. You have obligations that you have to attend to. Mm-hmm. So how do you do it? How do you how do you build in and prioritize the time and, and the the right priority set in order to to get the knowledge that you feel you need or at least to be satisfied with your level of knowledge i mean that is kind of the impossible task right uh, for me I, I try to make it work for me and, and suit wherever i'm at in my life and i i have periods of time where i'm naturally able to get through more of that and periods of time where i'm like i don't even remember the last time i listened to a full album you know it it, 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 it there's the the ebbs and flows there Um, but I think part of it too is, and and maybe it just depends on the kind of person you are. And I'm speaking more broadly to the audience, you know, Jake, I I think I know more the kind of person that you are and I know the kind of person that I am. Um, but for some people, I think you try to force yourself into good habits of things and, and you end up wearing yourself out and giving up. Other people need to push themselves a little bit, uh, in order to, get themselves there or else they just don't pursue it. I would say the same thing about like diet or exercise plans, right? If you're, if you're some people, if you're too strict with a diet, you end up just giving up and it's worse for yourself than if you had just given yourself a couple of cheat days, right? Whereas other people, if they need that discipline, they need that push uh, and to reinforce and, and keep themselves in that line. And it's kind of seems like a ridiculous analogy, but really, like to me, music listening is the same way. If if it's something that's a priority to you in your life, take a moment and think about what kind of person you are. I'm the kind of person that like 
I, I try to make it work for me. If I feel like I'm killing myself and going out of my way to listen to music that I don't really want to listen to because I feel some obligation to, I'm not going to like that music anyway. And right. so it, it, it's a fruitless effort and it's not bringing any quality or value into my life. Um, but what I do is just try to go with the flow. And if, you know, when I know I have time to listen to music, I think, do I want to listen to something new and new to me? Do I want to listen to something that maybe came out a long time ago that I've been meaning to get to and I'm not familiar with? Or do I just feel like comfort food? Do I just want to listen to Nick Drake's Pink Moon for the thousandth time? Or, oh, yeah. or, or listen, that you know. That sounds pretty good. Or, right? <laughs> right. Like, uh, like sometimes you just got to put on your old classics, but I think there's still value in that. You know, what we were talking about, Jake, with like going back and learning this historical context and, and listening to old albums that you've never heard before and keeping up with new stuff that you've never heard before. I honestly still think all of that is worthless if you can't just put on one of your favorite albums and chill out to it. Because the beauty of it is if you listen to enough stuff that's new to you, then you go back and listen to your to your old classics with that new context, even if they seem completely unrelated, and you listen to it with new ears. I, I don't, right. you know, it, it's kind of the old the old uh, adage of you you never what what is it like cross the same river twice? Um, is that the saying? It you, might you never, be. You never set not, foot it, in the same river is. twice. Yeah, lightning doesn't strike the same place twice. Right, yeah, like, I, I kind Velocir- of feel like... Velociraptors don't test the fence in the same place twice. That's <laughs> Jurassic that, Park. That's the one, that's the one I want, that I dude, like. Just quick, just quick segue, just quick segue. <laughs> I want you to imagine seven-year-old Jake walking around the Omaha Henry Dorley Zoo pretending to be a dinosaur. <laughs> pretending to be a velociraptor (laughs) all right now with that mental image and anecdote please continue (laughs) okay so taking that wisdom and applying it i would i would go as far to argue that you never really listen to the same album twice if you're listening to other stuff in between it if you're allowing things to happen in your life between those listens you always pick up on stuff that you didn't notice before you think of things in a different way um, you know, maybe you've researched some background context. Maybe you've talked to a friend about it who opens your mind up to something new about that album. Um, I, I still find myself noticing new things about albums that I've been listening to for years and years. And and so there's value going back to that. I I, I think it's tough. You know, one one of the things that's that's a blessing and a curse about the world we live in today is with how available music is to listen to. You, there's this information overload where you feel like you just have to consume quantities and quantities as much as possible. But I would argue that for some of those key albums in your life, if you're not revisiting them, then you're not really gaining additional value by listening to new things either. Um, right. And Jake, I think I, I would love to get your opinion. I find that listening to records helps me with that. Yeah. Because the, the vinyl listening experience for me is a different experience. And I'm not just talking about sound quality from the format, but I'm talking about the dedication it takes to physically place the record on the platter and listen to it. It forces you to listen to it in a different mindset. And I'm always finding myself listening to records differently in that way. Yeah. And, and, and for me, I mean, it, to be frank, like, again, I'm not frank with Jake. <laughs> I, I, I don't go record shopping enough mainly because i live 1500 miles away from you tom yeah, i'm the i'm the influence i'm the ina- yeah, i'm the enabler <laughs> like i don't i don't go record shopping enough that i just wander into a record store where i can just buy whatever's you know on sale or cheap or new arrivals or whatnot mm-hmm. like i for me i i buy records i i buy a lot of records probably more than i should right um but i'm buying them online based off of you know i've, I've talked about this before based off of like email alerts that i set up so like to me it, it, when i buy an album it's very intentional it's because i want to own that record so mm-hmm. i go through i go through several phases of devotion towards that that artist and album i go through the act of spending hard-earned money money on that at having to actually click the button that says purchase and deliver this to my door and then getting that unboxing that I require myself that any new record I get I have to listen to before I can file it away on my record shelf which is what the whole goal is right mm-hmm. 
Um, so I, I have to listen to it at least once on vinyl and then any repeat listen, you have to open it up. I, I have to take it out of its sleeve. I have to look at the artwork. I have to, what am I talking about? I get to do that, right? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's a ceremony and that's mm-hmm. what makes it so poetic, right? That's what makes vinyl so great is that it's, a, it becomes a ceremony in which you pay respect to the artist and the album, to the art itself. Now that said, it's worth any album that you that you've listened to, even if you've only listened to it once. And I'm going to, I'm going to come out and say something bold here, Tom, and I want to see how you react to it. Oh God. So, so, so you look at like, um, you know, I have a list of, of my, my favorite albums of all time. So I have over 750 albums ranked Mm -hmm. and that ranking obviously fluctuates on a day to day basis based on my mood and what I'm into lately. But given the fact that it is trying to capture 750 plus albums in a ranked order, it it does pretty good. It's a good snapshot of my music taste. I also have included another additional 500 albums that are just considered really, really great albums that I have yet to listen to. And my goal is to hit all of those at some point in time. Mm -hmm. These are albums that are on like best of lists from sites that I respect. Also any album, not on any of those sites or in my list that is on the Rolling Stone top 500 list. And as I listen to these records, if I listen to it even one time, think that it's good, not even that I really like it, but think that it's good, I'm going to put it on my list. And when I put it on my list, it signifies that if this ever goes on sale, I will buy it. Mm -hmm. Meaning that that album is worth investing in. That album is worth spending the time with. I don't know if that's actually a sound strategy, but to me, it makes sense because it's paying tribute to great artists who make great albums. Yeah. I think that makes perfect sense. That's a, that's a cool choice. Um, and that's what, that's exactly what I'm talking about is like, so first off you, you also exemplified what I was talking about earlier in the discipline of taking that album and, and forcing yourself to listen to it and to consume it and look at the, the artwork and the liner notes before you file it away. Right. Like, like you were saying, that's part of the ceremony and that's part of the discipline of, of sticking with what you're listening to and not just letting it be, uh, you know, audio wallpaper. So the other side of that is then if you're taking the time to listen to it and you're taking the time to to buy it, to have it, a physical copy of it, that that also sets it apart from the million other albums that you could be listening to that are available to you online. And that right. kind of comes back to what I was talking about with just the the information overload and the level of availability, it levels the playing field when everything is just as accessible as everything else, but you still have your record collection that makes those records pop out a little bit more. You're a little bit more, you, you, there's more opportunity even for you to go back and revisit those. And that to me relates back to what I was saying about it's good to give albums repeat listens. And I feel too much these days that I hear people talking about like, oh, you know, I, w- when everything's available to me, I don't want to take the time to just listen to the same old stuff over and over again. And I, I understand that in spirit. And I, and I know that when people say that, they're not necessarily just saying, I'm going to listen to an album once and then never listen to it again because I have to, because it's all about numbers to me. It's all about reaching the high score in Pac-Man, you know, like that's what it feels like to me. It's this this, like pointless venture to just try to consume quantity. Right. Um, But velocities in music felt like that at time to time. It did. Yeah. And that, and we're trying to get away from that and like, like look at what is actually bringing value to our lives and also bringing value to the music conversation. Um, But but to me, it, the what you were talking about with the, the record ceremony and the process there, uh, it does help to facilitate what I was saying in finding value on repeat listens and valuing an album. Um, because there's there's just no like I just disagree with the the mindset of I I need to I need to get through as many as many of these as possible. It's like no, t- make it about quality, like take the time to get the note of the album and then revisit it a month or a year from then and right. see if you notice something different about it. Like that's, that's the beauty of the, the musical journey and the personal evolution of it is, uh, is seeing how you change and how the music seems to change with you and, and what you think of it. That's, it's a lot of fun. You know, there's, there's albums that I've started out loving and ended up hating and albums that I started out hating and ended up loving 
and albums that I started out loving that I only grew to love even more as I got to yeah. know them more. And it, you can't you can't have that journey with an album if you only listen to it once or twice. That's right. the key. Right. You can't. It's like you read my mind because the next question I was going to ask you, Tom, is have you had any albums that after getting historical context of maybe some of that that so given album a you listen to it and either liked it or didn't like it then mm-hmm. you look at album a's influences the artist's influences and go back and get kind of an understanding of the influences you come back to album a later and either like it more or like it less any albums that jump out to you like that yeah there's there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of 90s rock that i ended up appreciating even more once i understood um punk and new wave like okay. once once i went back and listened to like anything from uh you know ramones to talking heads to uh fear the clash uh elvis costello i'm i'm kind of jumping back and forth between what would be like punk and what would be considered new wave sure. and they you know they kind of flow into each other but then like having that missing link in the 80s of like bands like rem and the smiths uh you know evolving from like New York Dolls and and uh-huh. a lot of stuff that was going on um, in the late seventies. Then, like the way that that connects up to both, you know, British and American music in particular in the nineties, stuff that I love, like Blur and Oasis, and even like yes. Nirvana and Soundgarden. Like getting that chronology, it's like it it starts to form a more complete picture. That you know, when you don't have those those links between those major phases, they start to just look like disparate, like, like photo mosaics, you know? Um, but then the, you know, the, um, like the definition starts to become clear. Like you're looking at the musical picture in HD and, and because you had, and, and that context is what makes the picture clear. So I know that's not a very specific example. Like I'm, I'm not talking like, Oh, there was this one album that all of a sudden, like my eyes, you know, my, no, I, that, no, I was that's open helpful. to it. But that's- you, you actually, for for me to answer this question, I'm going to go to something that you actually showed me, okay. which is the Ramones. Yeah, we were. It, this was like oh, March yeah. of 2017. We went and saw Deaf Heaven in Omaha, and on the way home, you were t- showing me all about um, the Ramones and how you got into the Ramones. And um, at, it was actually before the show that you were talking. We were listening to the Ramones, and you were like, you know, what really got me into the Ramones is I dug into Buddy Holly. Yeah. And I, I, was like, I remember that. And, and and you showed me just like one or two Buddy Holly songs, and I was intrigued because you're like, well, the Ramones really just took a lot of what Buddy Holly did, and they just did it in a little different style. And because of that, it just was the right combination of sound that worked really well. Mm-hmm. And that's that really encompassed what the Ramones were. And and started this whole movement, right? Like, um, and then on the way back, we listened to a bunch of Bo- Buddy Holly on our drive home. And since then, like, I've continued to listen to Buddy Holly. And because that, I've kind of gotten into Buddy Holly. I can now, where Ramones was a band that I just never took seriously before. Mm-hmm. Now I I listen to it and I'm like, wow, this is really interesting. Like everything yeah. that they're doing, I can pick it apart. I can understand it. It's like all of a sudden I had this, this codex to an artist that um, everyone liked that I didn't really understand. And then all of a mm-hmm. sudden now I can understand it too. That, that is like this eureka moment and it's so liberating. It's so exciting. Like that's what I listen to music for. So yeah. a, 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 thank you. But, <laughs> and, and B like that is kind of, to me, the whole point of why you need to go back and and learn some of, some of the, uh, the influences of your favorite artists. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great example. And also, I mean, like it, it's just this whole web, it's this whole complex connected dots, right? Because you're, we're drawing lines. I think that was a great example because like Buddy Holly to the Ramones seems like a jump on the surface, but when you dig in, it's really not. And then also from there, even, you know, just as importantly, how many other doors does that open up? Like, you know, then also you're thinking, think about Buddy Holly's influence on the Beatles, you know, Mm -hmm. and and especially like early Beatles. Think about all, all of that. Um, You know, how like, like surf rock of the sixties even plays into that. Like there's, there's right. all these interconnected dependencies that, that to me are really beautiful. Like that's, that's what the beauty of music history and culture is, is that it's not just this linear thing. 
everything is is jumping around all the time and people from from complete different walks of life and parts of the world and and eras in time are influencing other people who have nothing to do with them um it's you know it's it's for everybody and consumed by everybody and impacted by everybody and i think that's a a pretty cool thing um and i'm kind of <laughs> i'm kind of starting to ramble at this point but um but no that's a that's a really good example i wish that i could come up with one off the top of my head that was along those lines well actually you know what i will um one thing that i would point out jumping back to the 90s rock example that i gave is when we were doing our grunge deep dive, Jake, talking about grunge music um, from, you know, the late 80s, early 90s, and I it had always kind of bothered me the way that the Seattle bands got lumped together, specifically the big ones like Soundgarden, Nirvana, Alice in Chains, and Pearl Jam, right? And when I when we were going back and listening to that, and I really dug into all of those groups' very early stuff, you know, Pearl Jam, their early stuff is their most well-known stuff, but then like... Soundgarden and Nirvana in particular have rich histories that that people don't really talk about quite as much because they were their pre-radio fame days. But like they had a starting point that was much more similar. But then when you listen to like Soundgarden and I think, oh, like I hear way more Led Zeppelin and like progressive rock in the technicalities of their early to mid-90s stuff. Um, and then I listen to Nirvana and I'm like, well, in this I hear way more punk and you go back and listen to like the butthole surfers and and you listen to um you know the stuff that was influencing Kurt Cobain at the time and you're like you know these were actually really different bands and sometimes listening to those bands influences helps you to recognize the differences from their contemporaries one big moment i had of that that you helped me with Jake is when we were doing our sunny day real estate deep dive and you called out on how it feels to be something on, you're like, I hear the band Yes all over this album. Yeah. And yeah. I I never noticed that. But then once you told once you said that, I couldn't unnotice it. And it, right. it, it it gives you a whole different lens through which to listen to that band. And that's not that's not to diminish their originality or their contribution to the music canon, but it's more just to acknowledge like that's one of the pieces of the puzzle that they're pulling in. It doesn't right. mean that half their sound is pulled from the band, yes, but even if it's 3 to 5%, that's a key ingredient in what they're doing, and if it's an ingredient that their contemporaries don't have, then it allows you to further differentiate that band from other bands in that sound, and it helps you to refine what you're listening to and 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 the context in which you're listening to it. So... I think that was a that was my best example I could come up with offhand. Tom, in in doing velocities in music, especially in the, in recent years where you know I've had kids and, and I've just been a bit more crazy, I I really have relied on you to um, keep up and and kind of be my guiding light and like what what I really need to to listen to um, in the new music that's coming out the onslaught of new albums released every Friday. And so, first of all, thank you for uh, always being on top of things. Oh yeah. Um, um, se- secondly, one thing that has really helped me is as I, you know, inevitably every two to three weeks or so, uh, get the urge to jump in and just check out, Hey, what new, new albums have come out in the last couple of weeks? Um, what I find is getting, uh, and Googling like best of lists, even so far, most, most music, um, uh, whether it's a, a review site or, um, you know, in, in any sort of blog, they most people because it's it's quick and easy hits um, are releasing like best of so far of the year, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and and actually, um, I shouldn't be so cynical about that because it it provides a really good utility. And and here's what I'm going to offer. I actually would espouse that if you are like me and and probably Tom <laughs> to, to to a lesser extent. Um, but if you are like us and you struggle keeping up with all of the new music and still want to, um, but you also feel pulled to listen to older supporting influences, I, I would I would argue this. Take 60% of your time and invest it in learning older stuff, learning and going through artist discographies. Rely on sites, maybe like Velocities and Music, but also many of the other very worthy blogs, whichever one resonates with you the most, and find those like best of lists and use those to drive you to 
the artists that maybe you wouldn't have normally listened to. Like a good example, Gorillaz. Um, I'm going to listen to every Gorillaz album that comes out. Nine Inch Nails, every Nine Inch Nails, even Father John Missy. I'm going to listen to every one. But stuff like Lucy Dacus, stuff like John Hopkins, stuff like the artist you mentioned, Tom, earlier, uh, Caroline Rose. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, stuff like that. That's stuff that that you can get from published um, sites that that help you filter out some of just the everyday humdrum of new music that's coming out and allow you to prioritize your time towards what's going to enrich your long term music appreciation. So that would be my piece of advice. I don't know, Tom, if, if that makes sense to you, if you would want to add anything to that. I, I totally agree with that. Um, the, the only thing that I would add to it is... I think that's a really good general starting point. And from there, refine it to suit your tastes. If you find that there are websites or record labels or publications that you tend to agree with or favor, you know, start focusing on those. If there are some that are focused on hip hop and you don't like hip hop, if there's some that are particular to uh, post-punk music and you don't like post-punk, you know, then maybe don't go in that direction. Um, Maybe sample some of that stuff just to broaden your horizons. But uh, you know, it's it's a good starting point, and then from there, just uh, go in whatever direction you feel enriches you the most. This conversation has truly invigorated me. I want to go out and like listen to a trillion albums right now. <laughs> like, I I just I want it all right now. Okay, Tom. Yeah. Let's do let's do something new. Okay. What's one random fact you would throw out there for everyone? Right now? Just some something that you know that you want to share. Uh, about myself or about music or what? You you name it, man. I'm just putting you on the spot because I like hearing you squirm. Here's a here's a fun fact for you. This is from this is from my English background. You do speak English. I do speak English. That's good. So fun fact. People tend to think of adverbs specifically as like L Y words. Like okay. happily, gladly, uh frustratingly like they're 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 words that describe an action right sure but really adverbs are one of the trickiest parts of speech what's interesting so if you're saying the 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 sentence i'm i'm going home home in that sentence is an adverb interesting because it's describing it's modifying the word going if you're saying i'm going to my home then home is a noun and it's part of the prepositional phrase, you know, to my home. Uh, but if you're just saying I'm going home, home is actually an adverb. You know, <laughs> I I always wondered how you ended up becoming an English major because obviously you liked it. And yeah. it just like something just clicked with me. You were the only person I've ever met who could turn English into a math equation. Yeah. And for that, I salute <laughs> you, Tom Hummer. That's, I salute you. It's a formula, man. I don't know. Look, Look, that was a really crappy fun fact, but you put me on the spot and that's what popped into my mind, all right? Yeah, well, that won't be the last time, so enjoy. <laughs> I better get like a backlog of of stuff I could pull from. Thank you guys for your continued support and participation. Tom and I love all of your comments on our YouTube videos, your Facebook messages, and emails to us. Your participation is what makes Velocities and Music possible. So, as always, thank you for being awesome. And Tom, thank you for staying up late with me tonight. Thank you. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. We are Velocities in Music, moving music discussion forward. (laughs) 